Good evening, everybody. Well, I should say, uh, good morning, 4th of October, 2022. I'm on after midnight. I'm a night owl. I took too long a nap. <laughs> but anyway, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit that like button. I appreciate it so much. And uh, my subscribers, oh, I can't tell you how I thank you. You're just awesome. Well, my first article has to do with white people. You know, I never thought about us being treated like all other nationalities. But we have been. We're not any better or treated any better than any other nationality, no matter what color your skin is. What do I want to say? We've been chastised to or swore at, brought down, beaten, murdered, degraded, disrespected. So we are no better. Where do they get that white people think they're better than any other color in the world? Because we are not. And the ones that think that are so wrong. You know, come on now. We're all alike. We all get treated the same in one way or another. No one is better than, a, than the next person. A new poll from NPR. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health shows that minority, majority of white Americans said that they face discrimination. Well, yes, we have all through the years. We're just like everybody else, no matter what color our skin is. For every racial group surveyed, the majority of people said that they believe their own racial group was often discriminated against. Who put us on a pedestal? We don't belong on a pedestal. We're treated just like everybody else. What is a peculiar, what is peculiar, peculiar about whites, though it is that while 55%, 55% said that there was racial discrimination against their group, only 19% said that they had experienced it in their lives and while looking for jobs. I know what it's like to look for a job, in my younger years even. And I felt worthless. Someone else walked in and took the job right away. And I had a good chance at getting it, but hey, you know, big deal. I'll just start over. You, you just can't, you can't put somebody on a pedestal and say, well, they think they're better than we are. No, you can't do that because nobody's better than anybody else. 13% said that they had faced discrimination when seeking a promotion. 11% when they were applying to go to college. However, most white respondents, 84%, also said that discrimination exists against those of other racial minorities. We are all alike. We've all been discriminated against. Both income and partisan politics seem to play a role in whether whites perceived their group as being discriminated against lower Moderate income whites are more likely to have faced discrimination in their own lives and to say that discrimination existed. This is also the group of people who got the most fired up during the 2016 election cycle. Joyce Lynn Kelly, or Kylie, K I L E Y, an associated director of Pew PEU Research Center said that there has always been a partisan line and that Democrats were always more likely to talk about how racial discrimination is the reason blacks can't get ahead. Well, whites can't get ahead either. Look at us now. We're far from being ahead of anything. It 
says, just open your eyes, white America. It's called reverse discrimination on our TV, newspapers, magazines. Try and get assistance if you are not of color and you go to the back of the line. Wake up. You can't see if you don't open your eyes. I've had to go back to the back of the line many times when I was younger, in my 20s and 30s, looking for work. Someone else got the job. They might have been black, brown, yellow, red, but they got the job. They were better equipped, maybe had more uh, resume, uh, substantial information that I didn't have. So am I supposed to just open my mouth and say, that's discrimination? Forget the discrimination. We're all alike. Oh my goodness sakes. All righty. Well, well, well. Here we go again with our dear, dear president. Biden's bad policies potentially connected to some shady business dealings. Speaking of Newsmax, Spicer and Company, on Tuesday, Representative James Comer, a representative of Kentucky, argued that some of the bad energy policies coming out of the Biden administration were potentially connected to evidence showing President Joe Biden was a part of Hunter's shady business deals. I had one video already on that. Yes, he was with his son in those, some of those deals that his son made. The Kentucky Republican began noticing, noting that everybody in America knows that the president's son, Hunter Biden, is a bad dude and a shady business character. Comer, or Comer, C-O-M-E-R, then pointed out that Republicans on the House Oversight Committee, committee on which he is a ranking member, had found evidence that Joe Biden did, in fact, know very well what his son was doing. More and more evidence is beginning to come in that Joe Biden was a part of this. That's a national security crisis, he said. This may explain some of the bad energy policies coming out of the Biden administration, the congressman added. We're finding out more and more about Joe Biden's relationship with Chinese energy companies. I mean, President Biden's selling us out to China, selling our land to China, farmland. I mean, it, it's in black and white right here. More and more evidence is coming forward, more and more emails, more and more text messages, and more and more whistleblowers that were in direct contact with Hunter Biden and his associates. Comer added, that would lead me to believe that this is of the utmost concern to every American. I agree, very much so. But this should have been taken, uh, what do I want to say, ahead of most of everything else before Biden got elected as president. Because how many years has Biden and his son, Hunter, been coercing with China against his own country? Our country. We don't know. We have no idea. But now he's humdrumming big time with China and God knows who else. So I believe the FBI had to know about a lot of this stuff that was going on. I just said that. My mind is ahead of what I'm trying to read, I guess, Comer said. I wonder why they haven't done anything about it. Well, yes before he was elected, President Biden. Last week, the House Oversight Committee rejected a GOP-led LED lead. LED, I thought lead was L-E-A-D. Oh, well, see, I don't know nothing. Effort which sought documents related to the Biden's family, family's international business deals, according to reporting from CNN. Comer noted that a lot of people are saying we need a special consul to investigate. Yeah, 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 amen. Hunter Biden, but acknowledged that special consuls take a long time. 
Well, like I said, this should have been started a long ago, long time ago. I think we can make a lot of progress in the Oversight Committee if we get can get things like the suspicious activity reports. Excuse me, I'm getting excited. If we can have a public setting where these whistleblowers can testify under oath, he said, they will come forward and they will testify. And we're in the majority and have the gavel on the Oversight Committee. Why wasn't this done earlier? If anybody had suspicion about Hunter Biden before the election of his father, why wasn't something started then? According to Reuters, suspicious activity reports are documents which financial institutions are required to file with the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network when they suspected money laundering or fraud is occurring. These documents assisted with monitoring out of the ordinary activity, which may indicate illegal activity or issues threatening public safety. That occurs within finance-related industries. Hunter Biden had 150 bank violations, Coomer said. Uh, Coomer explained that the bank notifying the federal government that we're pretty confident our client has committed criminal activity here. We have been told by some whistleblowers that Joe Biden's name was on some of those bank accounts, that their funds were commingled. So, something should have been done. The first inkling of the starting that they could see was not legal on Hunter Biden's whatever you want to call business dealings. What is this uh, like? Well, let's just wait till the last minute. We're all familiar with waiting till the last minute. I'm guilty of it. Yes, and then I pay the price for it. Yes, we all do whether it's baking or house cleaning or washing or whatever, laundry. Oh, I don't think I'll do that today. I'll wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow comes and something comes up and the laundry does not get done. Oh, well, I'll wait till tomorrow. There's always another day. My mom used to say that all the time. What I don't get done today, there will be tomorrow. Sometimes tomorrow never comes. Oh, my. Well, I don't know about this one. I think President Trump uh, might be in a little bit of trouble of some things. But this one here is the lib liberals are desperate to block Trump from 2024. I don't even like to read this, but it's an article. And I gotta scoot that over just a hair. But, former their, from their second impeachment to the recent FBI raids on Trump's, now something is blocking this uh, article here. What's going on? I didn't have this trouble when I looked it over before. Okay. No, can't do that. Hang on, people. You know me. I always got a problem with something. Never, never works. Go back up to the top. I can't put my camera down because every time I do, I black out. Then I have to start the whole video over. I'm going to shrink it just a little bit here. I might have to shrink it a little more. I hope I don't go out. But this is getting ridiculous. I can't get the article. Well, what on earth? 
Oh, there goes the camera. Hang on. All right, just a minute. I got to get the article back. Just a minute. Well, anyway, liberals are desperate to keep Trump from running for president. And I cannot adjust this at all, and I'm not sure why. Maybe the article just don't want me to tell everybody about it, which I would imagine... Most of you have probably already seen it anyway. Uh, from their second impeachment to the recent FBI raids on Trump, continue the first scale, first scale assault on President Trump in a something for President again in 24. I'm just going to read part of it, but I can't imagine why. Let me see now if I can slide this over. I can't get to the other side of it to shrink it in, to pull it in. Now let's see if I can do this. It still wants to close up the article. All right, hang on. Oh my goodness. Well, anyway, I hope you can all hear me. Okay, let's start this over. From their second impeachment of the recent FBI raids, Trump's Florida estate Liberals contend with a full-scale assault on President Trump in an attempt to keep him from running for president again in 24. They know that if he gets a Republican nomination, he will defeat Joe Biden or any other Democrat contender in the general elections. I still can't get all of it. What seems to be my problem here? Pretty soon I'm going to give up and just go on to the next one. This is not working. I'm going to, I'm going to shut it down. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I will have to work on that or just let it go. Alright, let's go with this one. I can't understand why that won't work, but it won't. Alright, let's see what this one is. All right, this has got to do with uh, Mitch McConnell is hanging Americans out to dry. Well, I'm not real crazy about Mitch McConnell. I don't know if you guys are or not. Leave me a comment. Uh, we'll see what they've got to say here. Despite Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Republican in Kentucky being a Republican, May conservatives and patriots have their doubts about him. McConnell has made a lot of decision, decisions that lead much of the conservative moment to believe he pri prioritizes his own interest above the good of the nation. In other words, the Senate minority leader doesn't mind cutting a deal with Democrats if he thinks it will help him get more political leverage and power. In the real time, as the United States faces a series of major crises, McDonald once again dropped the ball by voting for stopgap legislation that does more for other nations than for Americans. A disastrous bill for America. The new stopgap bill that McConnell and other Republicans voted for hands out millions to the Ukrainian government along with helping new African re refugees arrive in the state without the proper security precautions. As Senator Minority Leader McConnell could have very well pushed for the reduction of federal spending and a focus on fixing issues hurting Americans. Some examples of these issues include the labor hijacking of children's education, the newly bloated IRS, the empowerment of drug cartels and human traffickers thanks to Biden's open border policies. McConnell had leverage to put a hold on new spending legislation until the least 
at least some of these issues had have been resolved. However, he and other inlets, elites, who are supposed to represent conservative voters, decided against doing this. By throwing his weight behind this particular stopgap legislation, McConnell's allowing business us business as usual to continue even as that comes at an expense of Americans' well-being. The troubling pattern with McConnell, Senate Minority Leaders vote for this disastrous stopgap legislation comes weeks after he openly cast doubt on Republican chances to take back the Senate. By McConnell's logic, a win for Republicans in the seat will be harder because stationwide races demand a higher quality of candidates rather than House elections where just applicable district members vote. After taking heat for this, the Senator Minority Leader walked it back, claimed the GOP has a 50-50 shot at winning the upper chamber. At this rate, only time will tell what else McConnell does to further sell out the United States while increasing his own power. My God, another one selling us out? How many more are there trying to sell us out? You know, I hate to repeat myself in, in all the videos, mostly that I do. Why are they trying to break the United States of America and the citizens of America that were born here, grew up here, belong here? What is their freaking problem? Unreal. Well, I kind of overdid my minutes here trying to get Trump up, but yes, we all know that everybody, not everybody, but um, certain groups will be against trying to get Trump out of the election. But even though if he has to pay a fine, uh, when he's charged with these things I read today, which I wanted to bring to you, but maybe you've already read it in the articles anyway, I still want him to run. Yes, I do. Even if he loses, I don't care. I want him to run for our president. Our country is in bad, bad shape. We are hurting so bad. Waiting for a stimulus check. Boy, I tell you, I'm down and out. I need a stimulus check. Iowa, where I live, has done nothing in the stimulus check category. What did they do with all that money? Why are Iowans going without? Can't pay their rent can't pay their house payments, their car payments. And factories are closing. They're cutting down the workers. What are we supposed to do? It's not our fault. Okay, people, I'll be back. God bless.